Okay, you're welcome back. Right now we're being joined by Mr. Shegun Shokpaton. We're going to be talking about the fact that the federal government may revive economy by unlocking $1 trillion in asset sales. Mr. Shegun Shokpaton has just joined us. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Yambu. Okay, let's... Let, yeah, let's just try to quickly make sense of what it means to... Uh, unlock the economy, you know, unlock the economy, and this time it is being tied to the sale, asset sale, uh, that will what up to one trillion dollars. Let us just understand what that is, because first thing that comes to mind is they won't sell them again. No? So what is it really? <laughs> well, um, just going by conventional wisdom. It sounds like a good idea. Mm. If you owe money, so what the presidential advisory council is saying is the country has a huge debt burden, a huge debt um, obligation, but the country also has a massive asset stock. And usually, what you say to somebody that is owing is that why are you sitting on so much, so many, so much asset and you are owing so much? It's not efficient. So get rid of your debt obligation by selling some of your assets. So conventional wisdom should make sense. The challenge with this um, concept is that the assets that we're speaking about um, are not exactly in a state where you will be able to derive the kind of value that they ought to attract. And that will be a problem. You know, so before you get to the point of selling or securitizing, or any other model that you might want to use to attract value to those assets, there is a lot of work to be done. So I like the fact that they said unlocking the value in those assets because that unlocking is, you know, uh, literally what we need to do as a country. So let's take uh, the refinery as an example. They are assets of the country and they can be sold or concession or, you know, whatever other model that we want to use. Now, before you get to that stage, let's deal with the decades of work that has built into those assets themselves, such that they are in almost non traditional condition. You know, so that's just an example, and you can take that example and extend it to any other of our assets. The only assets that I think we have that today you cannot snap your finger and put it out for the NTCL. You know, once you go outside of the NTCL, have a lot of work in terms of cleaning up, you know, uh, assets, getting that to run efficiently before you can then talk about attracting invest in the investment uh, through them. So I think there's a lot of work, but generally speaking, it's a good direction to, to get to work. Okay. Um, <clears throat> how is this different from what, for instance, the PDP presidential candidate was saying? Uh, prior to the election. He was talking about sale of assets, he was talking about privatization and all that. And so many people, including the, the party in government right now, were berating him that he wants to sell it uh, to his cronies and uh, that's it. It's a bad policy. So what's the difference between what he was saying at that time and what is being uh, mauled right now, what is being uh, talked about in uh, corridors of power right now? Yeah, there, there, there is no difference at all. And if you if you remember, um, even the Buhari administration, um, midway through their term, actually explored the option of selling off some assets, and they did sell off concession some. Um, a good example would be some heritage assets like the National Theater in Lagos. You know, um, the, the, the difference now is that you know, there was suspicion at that time, especially with regard to the PDP presidential candidates at that time, there was suspicion from a good section of the country with regard to the intention. You know, so the candidate said, uh, I will enrich my friends. Of course, he has come out <laughs> since then, perhaps, to clarify what exactly he meant, but I don't think any Nigerian would want to see our assets stock of one trillion naira uh, get and get monetized and attract investment, but those assets end up in the hands of 
cronies and friends of the people in government. That was the problem. And I think, in my opinion, that problem has not gone away. Um, if we want to go down that road, then the transparency, the type of transparency that we saw in the bidding for telecom licenses in uh, the year 2000 must be replicated. If the process is perfectly transparent, um, open to public scrutiny, there is a public procurement process, there is a public bidding process, then I don't think that will be too much of a problem. The only problem will then become technical issues, you know, around how to optimize those assets. So I think it's mainly a trust issue more than anything else. Yeah, but uh, do you have any confidence that this government will do uh, differently or better, that these things will be sold to people who are neutral and not necessarily connected to the government? <laughs> Because I don't know. You are putting me on the spot. No, no. I, I'm just I, asking, Mr. I, I, I don't know. I'm just asking. You don't know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's a matter of opinion. And, you know, I always say, and I've been saying this um, in recent months, that the best way to predict what will happen in the future, maybe not the best way, but one of the best ways to predict the future is simply to look into the past. And if you want to know what a man will do tomorrow, look behind you and check what he, has, what he did yesterday. You know, so if you take that analogy and you look at all of the questions and the ambiguity and the lack of transparency that we have in the running of the, the affairs of Lagos State since 1999 to today, then, you know, you have your answer. So I, 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 I'm not going to say more than that because um, we don't know. It, it's just a matter of opinion. But for me, um, I, I, I wouldn't be particularly confident, to be honest. <laughs> Since you don't know some of the things, or you don't want to talk about some of the things, <laughs> let's leave them there. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Shokoton, well, you said something happened in 2000 and had, it has to be replicated. Okay, in what are some of these things that were done at that time that you think made that process more transparent than the ones that we may have had in the uh, following years when things like yeah, that come so up? Yes. Yeah, I mean, look, when when that process started, we, we must, if we cast our minds back, um, the spectrum frequencies that were to be sold were created by the government of uh, the then dictator of Abacha, you know, around 1997, 1998, in fact, starting from 1996. But when the Obacha came on board, as soon as he came, they started talking about this thing, that we're going to have a different process for the telephone licenses in Nigeria for GSM. The conversation was public. When it was time for the process to start, the advertisements or the, the, the public notices um, uh, inviting bidders and investors was public. So, and then right at the beginning of the process, the, the, the pathway from beginning to end was clarified publicly. What this did was that it, it attracted the best operators in the world to that process. You know, so which is why you then had the likes of NCN, who was already a market leader in, 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 in Africa, and a couple of other leaders come in and then you know take interest in that process. So if we're going to do um, you know we we'll talk about um, sale of assets, strategic assets, uh, of some asset stock, you know, and all of that. We must follow that path religiously. There must be transparency. There must be um, a deliberate effort to attract the best investors from around the world. And there must be a departure from colonialism and allowing people that have access to the corridors of power to um, horribly. Whatever word you want to use to bid for this asset. You know, a lot of times we know that these consortia are usually just smoke screen and masks of friends of government. And you can see an example of that in what is happening in the power sector today. A lot of the investors that went into that sector simply lack the competence and the capacity to run those um, ventures profitably. But the process was not transparent. 
you know, so we have to move away from that if we're going to succeed, you know, with this. And, and if you ask me, I am not even sure that this is exactly where we should be going towards right now. I think because you start talking about sale of assets, national assets, knowing what we know about how governments run in Nigeria, the first thing that I expect the government to do is to clean up the process of governance and the structures of governance. The corruption that is endemic in government must be dealt with. You can't run away from it. As long as you have not done that, we will end up exactly where we started from. Because the vested interests that will not allow these things to work will still be there. So I, I really think that, you know, and this is the challenge I have with everything that this government has been doing since it started just a month ago. There is no conversation, significant conversation around the question of corruption. There is none. We're just going along that door. Um, the, the business of government and governance in Nigeria is normal and it's done in the way it's done all over the world. It's not. We have abnormalities. We have um, um, uh, situations and scenarios that that that, um, that that are simply illogical, that defy economic logic, that defy economic policy because of corruption. So the, so the president must speak to this issue. There has to be a clear, deliberate plan on how the scourge of corruption and cronyism is going to be dealt with. If he does not do that, I'm sorry, there is no beautiful sounding policy, there is no beautiful sounding project that will work. We have never lacked ideas in this country, we've never lacked good policy, we've never lacked good law. The problem has always been implementation that gets uh, sabotaged by corruption. Okay, okay, so this Mr. Thing about that thing is, you know, yeah. if you ask my position, it will fail. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, um, this is where how much we can go, Mr. Shokwaton. Well, thank you so much for being a part of our program today. Thanks for having me. Okay, Mr. Shokwaton is uh, a principal partner at Woodridge and Scott Consulting. He was uh, best known as a public affairs analyst, and he was giving us his thoughts. Um, this is what we will leave you with this uh, morning. Life is not what you expect. It is made up of the most unexpected twists and turns. That's according to Elia Raja. Um, we're hoping that we're going to meet again tomorrow to continue uh, from where we stopped. In the meantime, my name is Nyamudu Agaji. Thanks for being there.